Hello students, welcome to the second lecture of our chapter number 4 that is on the fuel cell technology. Right. In the previous video we saw about how the fuel cell actually works and how the fuel cell is supplying the energy with the help of the chemical reactions that is almost similar to the battery type. But in case of the fuel cell we have to supply the hydrogen and with the supplying of the hydrogen energy is being generated. In the case of the batteries, the energy is stored, but in case of the fuel cell, the energy is generated with the help of the hydrogen. The basic advantage of using the fuel cell is that the fuel cell has the highest specific power in it. Right, compared to the battery, the fuel cell has the highest specific power, and that specific power can be utilized for the vehicle driving or the vehicle speed. Right, so that the battery that we can use has higher energy density that we can use for the better range, and with that co combination, we can also use the fuel cell in the combination of our battery that can provide us the higher. Power, right? So this combination can work better for the electric vehicles in the future. Right? So let's uh, start this lecture and we will see about the different types of the fuel cells that can be used in our normal electric vehicle. Right? So first of all the fuel cell characteristics that we saw. Again the graph you can see that the voltage which is being generated in the fuel cell will be around 0.5 to 0.7 in the actual characteristics, right? So we will have to use the number of fuel cells for that. So that pack of the fuel cell will give us the power that is being required for our vehicle. First type of the fuel cell is the alkaline fuel cell, right? According to the fuel cell name, whenever you will see the name of the fuel cell, it gives us the type of the electrolyte that is being used in the fuel cell. Also with the fuel cell, there have to be two electrocatalysts, right? As we are saying about the anode and cathode. Now anode hydrogen is there, cathode oxygen is there, but they are not the proper uh, anode cathode. It are they are supplied for the procedure. So for the enhancement of the procedure, there will always be two catalysts for the anode and for the cathode. Now in the case of the alkaline fuel cell, as an anode a nickel alloy is used and as a cathode we are using lithiated nickel oxide right lithiated nickel oxide is used as the cathode so this fuel cell uses non noble metals right noble metal is a platinum most of the fuel cells that we will see further uses platinum as an electrocatalyst which is the noble metal and which costs higher rare to get. So because of that this alkaline fuel cell gives us the electrocatalyst which are non-noble metal. Now the electrolyte that is being used that is alkaline electrolyte. So in this case as an alkaline electrolyte we are using potassium hydroxide in the case of the alkaline fuel cell. Now in the case of alkaline fuel cell, the chemical reactions that you can see in the right part, there is called the anode, the S2 gets two hydroxides, right? The hydroxides which are being generated in the cathode region is supplied towards the anode and it gets two H2O and that releases two electrons which is being transferred for our current. Right. So it is a bit, little bit different compared to our basic fuel cell reaction but it is similar to the same reaction and at the cathode O2 gets to H2O that is water which is being generated or which is being in the potassium hydroxide mixture plus 4 electrons that will come from the cathode uh, sorry from the anode and that cathode gets the electrons and it releases the uh, hydroxide for OH minus that hydroxide goes back to the anode and it again gives us the H2O that H2O is released from the left side or from you can see say that anode side the H2O is exhausted in the case of the alkaline fuel cell in the case of the normal fuel cells that we saw in that the H2O was released from the right side or we can say from the cathode side so that is a little bit different in case of the alkaline fuel cell 
Now the alkaline fuel cell works at the temperature around 60 to 100 degree Celsius. It gives us the better performance, it works as the lower temperature as well and also the average cost of the alkaline fuel cell is sufficiently uh, usable which is $200 per kilowatt hour. Right. So these alkaline fuel cells can be future prospect for our vehicle. The second type is the proton exchange membranes fuel cell. Now in the case of the proton exchange membranes, the solid polymer proton exchange membranes is used as an electrolyte. Right. For the proton exchange membranes, we are using solid proton exchange membranes or we can say solid polymer electrolyte for the fuel cell. Also the two electrodes will be solid, the electrodes will be made from the platinum both anode and cathode. As I have told you earlier that next fuel cell that we will see mostly uses the platinum as anode and cathode. So in this case as well we are using platinum as the case of the anode and cathode. The working of the proton exchange membrane fuel cell will be similar to our normal fuel cell procedure that we saw in the earlier video that you can see in the anode. The H2 is disintegrated into 2H plus plus 2 electrons. That H plus and electrons is transferred to our cathode and combines with the O2 and gives us the 2H2 that is water that will be exhausted from our right side. Now this type of the fuel cell has the most number of advantages compared to other fuel cells. First, it has the highest specific power. Second, it has all the solid things like the electrolyte is also solid. So only liquid thing that remains here is water. So corrosion will be lowest in the case of the uh, proton action membrane fuel cell. Also, there are higher prospect of this. Also, we can get the better performance, better efficiency with the help of this proton action membranes. It gives us the proper porosity to pass the hydrogen ions from that electrolyte that we are using, the proton action membranes fuel cell electrolyte. So, this is the best fuel cell that we can use in the vehicle right for the right time or the situation right now. There are different fuel cells on which the research is still going on, but for now, this is the best fuel cell that we can use. The temperature range at, at which this fuel cell uses generally around uh, 50 to 100 degrees Celsius as well. So, this is also a good factor for our vehicle as well. So, this is the best choice for right now. The third one is the direct methanol fuel cell type. Now this is a slightly different fuel cell which does not supply directly hydrogen towards the anode but supplies the methanol in place of the hydrogen and from that methanol the hydrogen is disintegrated right. So this can be a prospect as well that we use the methanol in case of the hydrogen and from that we will disintegrate the hydrogen and we will use that for our chemical reaction right so this is simply how the direct methanol fuel cell work now in the case of this direct methanol fuel cell was the electrolyte that we will use will either be trifluorosulfuric acid or it will be the same electrode that we saw in the earlier that is proton action membrane electrode electrolyte that can be used in it for the anode and cathode both again the platinum metal will be used for the anode cathode in the case of the procedure or the chemical reaction you can see the methanol is combined with the H2O gives CO2 six hydrogen ions and six electrodes electrons that hydrogen ions and electrons will be transferred with the help of the electrolyte and the current supply that we have given the cathode gives us the oxygen it combines with the hydrogen that has been coming from the electrolyte also it will get the electrons from our current line and it will give us the H2O that H2O will again be used for the anode procedure so overall procedure is the 2CH3OH plus 2O2 3O2 gives us 2CO2 
plus 4H2O, right? So here there is one extra byproduct compared to the normal hydrogen procedure that is CO2, right? So that CO2 have to be reused or we can say regeneration of the CO2 will have to be done otherwise the CO2 will be liberated in the atmosphere and the advantage of the fuel cell that we are using that the zero emissions is there will be neglected if we are using the direct methanol type. Direct methanol type fuel cell is still under the research criteria and still the developments are going in the direct methanol type fuel cell and that will be for the uh, improved in the future as well. Next one is the phosphoric acid type fuel cell or we can say the acid type fuel cell. There are different choices for the acid type fuel cell for the electrolyte that is sulfuric acid, uh, phosphoric acid. So from that the phosphoric acid gives us the best conduction to the hydrogen ions. Right? The hydrogen ions needs to be supplied from anode to cathode and that 100% uh, Conduction can be obtained with the help of phosphoric acid. So we are using the phosphoric acid in case of this fuel cell. The electrolytes for the anode and cathode both will again be platinum in this case as well. The chemical reaction is the same as our normal fuel cell. The biggest drawback of this fuel cell is that it works at higher temperature at around 300 to 500 degree Celsius. It's because of this drawback and because of the acidic fuel cell, there is the chances of the corrosion and the different scaling to open fuel cell material. Because of that, we do not prefer the phosphoric acid fuel cell. We prefer alkaline fuel cell in place of the phosphoric acid fuel cell for the same procedure, which gives us the better advantages. So, these were the four types of the fuel cells that we saw. In the next lecture, we will see another two types of the fuel cell and then we will see further about the how hydrogen can be stored if we are using the hydrogen. Right. So, that will be seen in the next video. Until then, thank you so much.